What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. This is probably the most important video I've made so far this year. Today I'm gonna show you what this Ryzen 3 3300X is capable of. And be prepared, this is not like the review you saw last week. This is completely different. At least I'm going to take the review of this product in a completely different way. The technology is constantly changing. And I believe that uh, we must exit the old schemes uh, to be a bit uh, open to explore all the possibility we have with that technology. I, this is sound very mysterious, but you will understand at the end of this video. Uh, this video is scripted, so I wait every single word in order to make a video as short as possible, but giving you all the information you must know. Said so, I think you must watch every single part of the video, do not skip, do not fast forward, since you're going to miss some very important parts. But now, let's get started. Let's take a look inside this CPU, and why it's so different from the previous Zen 2. Before this, all the Zen 2 was built with two or more CCX and forced to work together and share in the cache. Now, we have only one CCX, with the result of a much better intercore latency, something that has been rumored to be a feature of the upcoming Zen 3 CPU. On paper, this is sound great, but there's an important piece missing in this picture. Most of the people, and sadly many reviewers, seem to completely forgot to mention. Now I want to make you think about something. What is the change of bottlenecks you have on your PC? What is the first bottleneck? Well, of course, is you but uh, in this video we are going to stay within the hardware limit. The first thing is the monitor, since it is the point of connection between the digital and your eyes. Then of course, from the monitor we have attached the GPU, that is one of the most important parts for a gaming PC. After that we have the CPU, since we have to feed the GPU, but something else have to feed that CPU, and here we have the memory and the storage. Now, let's go back to this slide. So, we have our game in our hard drive or SSD, NVMe of course. When we launch that game, the most important part of that software is loaded into your RAM that the CPU is going to use to have the data in a fast place. And the RAM is constantly exchanging information with your CPU in both directions, read and write. And only when the CPU elaborates the data is ready to send the information to your GPU. At this point, it's clear that what you see in that red box must be fast, or the CPU is going to wait. Because 4 GHz or 5 GHz are pretty much useless if the CPU is always waiting, right? And that is why we need to make the fabric faster, especially if we want to manually overclock the CPU. But how? Easy. Fast and well-tuned RAM memory. And this is the whole point of this video since I saw a lot of reviews and almost nobody covered this topic with the importance that it deserves. I saw reviews with 4 stick and 32 gigabyte of memory, but at 3200 MHz and not tuned at all like XMP. I saw review with kit like this, the Vengeance LPX 3200 MHz C16, that is like 3 years old. It uses Samsung D die, so not the B die, the D die that is old, of course, and it doesn't have any overclocking capability at all. And for the same price, you can buy a kit like this, the Ballistic Sports LT, that now the new name is the Ballistic, and is a kit that is cost the same, and it can drive the CPU to the maximum limit of the fabric speed. I saw also a kit with the Flare X, that is, by the way, one of the best b die kit you can buy, it's around 100, 120, so it's cheap, it's fast, but again, this kit was left at XMP and not tuned at all. That is fine, because I understand that most of the user doesn't want to bother overclocking their PC, doesn't want to, to spend time in tuning memory, just they want to click the memory inside the slot, select XMP and they are ready to go. But that is the old approach that I was talking before. So with this video, I really want to show you the importance of investing a bit of your time in tuning the memory, and since uh, you can buy a very nice memory kit like this one for less or the same price of the kit that somebody are advising, and saying that is free, you have to buy the RAM, and uh, since it's free, of course, 
is something that you must do since what you're going to see now it will completely change your mind. Now, when you do the setup of your system, if you don't touch anything, what you have is this, the JDEX pack, which is usually very ridiculous. But if you set XMP profile or DOCP for the AMD board, first the system will tell you that you need to keep the memory in sync, that is very important or you lose a lot of latency. So we set manually the memory in sync with the Infinity Fabric and most of the people, most of the tester just do this and it is not fine since what happens when you set the XMP profile is just this. So primary timing with the spec of the XMP profile, which is stored inside the memory, but they cannot store everything. And from board to board, something changed. So the XMP is a very basic setup from the primary timings. But as you can see here, there are a lot of timings that are left on auto, so untouched. And you let the board decide what she thinks that is best. And clearly, is only a small part of the big picture. Now, this is how it looks like a profile that is set manually. So, memory frequency, infinity fabric speed. The voltage needs to be tuned as well. And of course, now the timings. Everything is set on manual here. And there is the run calculator for that, which is uh, very useful. It is, it is not perfect in its tuning, and you need to invest a bit of time in that. But as you can see here in this video, is really worth it since uh, the main timings you have are already nice uh, for at least a base setup and then you have to fine tune a bit voltages some timings but I made a lot of video and I will keep make video how to tune it so as you can see here I've set everything manually so anything is left on auto except a couple of settings that uh, doesn't really need to be set uh, manually so everything is set and this is why it's important to set a manual profile and not let the board decide. Because the board, of course, uh, use everything that is the most stable configuration. So you load an XMP profile and you have a stable system that runs without any issue at all. It's, it has been tested and everything. So, But it doesn't mean that you cannot create a profile that is stable with the maximum performance. This is the integrated benchmark of Far Cry New Dawn. I'm using the G-Skill Flare X as base, and this is a very nice kit of well beamed B die. But if I leave the 3300X at XMP, which is 3200MHz CAS 14, that can be considered a high end kit. The result is that the 3300X is the last in line. But just by tuning the timings, we have a very nice boost. And if I raise the RAM and the fabric frequency, we have another boost. If I manually overclock the frequency of the CPU at 4.4 GHz, we can have an increase of only 2 FPS on average, but there are cases when overclocking this CPU can lead to a better gain, and it's something that uh, should be easy, since at least the sample I have can handle 4.45 GHz uh, at uh, 1.3 V, so it's a safe voltage, and uh, I'm going to test many other samples, so later I will confirm you and probably make a guide of how to overclock this CPU, if needed. This is the integrated benchmark of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is a very CPU intensive game. Once again, the default 3300X at XMP is the last. But if I tune the memory and fix the CPU speed to 4.4 GHz, we are actually in a completely different position on the chart even better than the 3800X overclocked at 5 GHz. But as you can see here, if a game is heavy, and in my opinion not very well optimized, you won't see big gains. But still, with a well-made memory profile and a manual overclocking, this CPU can do big numbers. Take a look at the neighbors. We have on the left the 9700K, that cost more than double. And on the right we have a 3800X overclocked at 5 GHz with extreme cooling. And this is a clear example of what I was talking before, intercore latency and overall the bottlenecks. Because it doesn't matter if your CPU is running at 5GHz, 6GHz or 4, 
if he's waiting, the results will be bottlenecked. Now, let's move to World of Warcraft, that is a good game to benchmark the real potential of a CPU. Same story, at XMP is on the lower end of the chart, even if we have a very strong loss, but just by manually tuning the memory to a 3200 MHz profile, I was able to jump ahead of an overclocked Core i7-7700K. And when I tune the memory at the maximum potential, we are now faster than any other Zen, at ambient cooling at least, and ahead of the 9900K at default. And take a look at the lows. Even if I overclocked, the 9900K can be considered behind for a fluid gameplay point of view. In Dungeon, we have a similar situation. When the memories are properly tuned, it can do really good things. In Ride, it's quite obvious that the single CCX and a good tuning can transform this small CPU from the last to the best. Again, take a look at the lows. With 96.1% and 81.1% low, this is the best CPU I ever tried so far in this situation. And we are talking about a hundred and something dollars CPU. Let's take a look of the memory and CPU frequency of the 7700K. As you can see here, it's almost useless to invest time in tuning. And that is probably the reason why that nowadays uh, nobody bothered too much uh, to test uh, RAM frequency, latency, and all that kind of test that it was using many, many years ago. This is probably what we have seen so far in the reviews. A good CPU, similar to the 7700K, the old flagship that was dominating the gaming scene just a few years ago, but nothing more than that. With the 3300X, the story is different, and the benchmarks you saw earlier are the perfect example. And I must point this thing out. This is what I want to show you. Let's go in a more deep detail. This is the 7700K in the World of Warcraft benchmark you just saw. For who are not familiar with the frame time, is how long it takes to render a frame. So, lower the better. And if you see spikes, it means that in that point, you had a very bad FPS drop. That translated, a commonly called use stuttering or micro stuttering. This is the 3300X at XMP. A big improvement over the 7700K, the double of the cache, the better IPC, and the Zen 2 architecture is delivering overall a better gaming experience. But we can do better than this. This is the tuned 3300X. It's faster and with slightly less spikes. So, at this point, it's very easy to compare the impact of the XMP versus the manual tuning. Even easier now to see the difference from the 7700K to the 3300X. Here, the family picture. The manual tuning profile stands out from both. Let me show you another real case scenario. This is an average of many runs of real gameplay. So, this result is solid. I played for hours just to make this chart alone. And I bet that everyone agreed that uh, going from the last in line to the first position is something worth investing, especially when it's free. Now, I don't want to get hated by all the reviewers out there, but in my opinion, a good review is a review that shows you all the possibility, then it's up to you if you want to stay stock or to tune your PC. Before closing, I did some synthetic benchmarks. The 3300X shows again a good result in productivity area, even if uh, in this test uh, the memory tuning doesn't affect uh, the performance uh, too much. At default, the single core performance is a good 10% better than the 7700K, and uh, we can see that at default is very similar to the manual overclocking to 4.4 GHz, and it confirmed that uh, the boost works. If I overclock the 7700K, is of course ahead, but there's also a gap of 600 MHz, something that won't be possible with the upcoming 10300 that should be his direct competitor, since uh, it's pretty clear now that uh, this new CPU is a 7700K under another name. Now, here we see some scaling with the memory and uh, overall another great performance versus the Intel counterpart. Now, I really hope that after this video, you will see memory tuning with different eyes, especially now 
that you can buy a cheap memory kit that can be tuned to be able to do the results that I just show you. So to push the limit of the infinity fabric of this uh, small but powerful CPU to the limit. In the upcoming weeks, uh, I'm going to do a lot of content around this CPU, since I think this is one step closer to the Zen Free architecture, and there's still a lot uh, to uncover of what it's capable of, especially when used in a budget build with a different graphics card and so on. So from me, you can expect a lot of tuning guide and again, memory frequency tuning guide with this CPU. Now, I bet that this video will generate a lot of discussion, a lot of comment. Uh, I can try to answer to everybody, but lately I'm a bit behind of answering the comment section. Uh, and as well, if you post on Reddit, I can try to answer you. But if you want to contact me, join my Discord server and uh, usually I can respond very quickly and if you want clarification or anything else. As always, I hope that I give you interesting things to discuss and uh, like the video if you like it, subscribe for more and I have a lot of more coming and well, see you in the next one.